episode 113. This is The Business of Architecture. Hello, Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears, and this is the show where each week I speak with a successful architect, designer, or consultant to discuss tips, strategies, and secrets for running a profitable and impactful architecture practice. Today's show is sponsored by BQE Software, the makers of ArchiOffice. ArchiOffice is the office and project management software built with the needs of architects in mind. And for a limited time, startup firms can get two free seats of ArchiOffice for a year. Go check it out at ArchiOffice.com. Today's the second half of my interview with the Vice President of Industry Marketing at House, the leading residential remodeling and design platform and community. Today's guest has experience spanning advertising, consulting, marketing, and social strategy for Fortune 500 brands to a host of innovative startups. She co-founded her first internet startup in 1998, a home improvement retailer that was eventually sold to Walmart. If you aren't familiar with Howes, perhaps you live under a rock because in the past five years, Howes has taken the residential remodeling and building world by storm. And with that, I'm happy to welcome our incredible guest to the show today, Liza Hausman. So, Liza, uh, in my conversations with architects, and we have a lot of residential architects who are listeners of the show, and so you know, we, we talk a lot about some of the, the challenges that professional architects are, are facing, you know, one of them is competition based on fees. Hmm. You know, uh, one of them is being compared to drafts people who may or may not necessarily have the same design skills as architects. Um, but, or just people who charge less, you know, in terms of sort of undercutting each other. Yep. Do you have any insight on that on Liza on, on how architects could, how, how should they approach that problem? You know, both from your knowledge of, of working with house, but also your own personal knowledge of being a marketing and advertising person. Yep. No, I think that's a really, it's a really good question. Um, uh, and I think one of the things that we wanted to do with house, um, was give professionals a way to differentiate themselves, right? I mean, the, the number one thing that you want, that a professional wants, right, is they want someone to pick up on the phone and call you, not because you're a name and they want to see what you're going to charge, right? If you're an architect and you have a design aesthetic and you want to be called by someone who thinks your work is wonderful and is going to trust you, right, to solve their problems and use your creativity, right? They're calling you because they want you, not because you're a name that they got and how much are you going to cost, right? And how do you do that? Well, you, you do that by differentiating yourself, right? You do that by getting that person who picks up the phone to have already feel like they've made a choice about you. They're not just hiring an architect, right? They're hiring somebody specific, right, that they, that they have an opinion about. So one of the things that I talk to professionals in, in the house community and, and of course architects um, as well is how do you how do you build your brand right how, and and it's a hard thing for folks because you know most most people just want to do their job right I, I enjoy right I enjoy designing homes I want to focus on that I don't want to have to be a marketing person that's right that's a lot of extra work um, and so we we created the house profile for professionals to do two things, right? We're, most of the people at house were homeowners. We're not, we're not trades people ourselves. We've been on the homeowner side of the equation and we wanted the ability to find somebody not by word of mouth, not because my neighbor said I, I liked working with this person, but because I thought this person has an aesthetic that fits me and I can see their personality and it looks like a good fit and their approach makes me comfortable, right? And everything about, you know, what I read makes me feel like they're the right person for me, not for my, not necessarily for my neighbor, right? Because there are many quality people out there, but it doesn't mean they're a fit for my project or my aesthetic or how I like to work. So we wanted to give people the ability to evaluate professionals, right, in depth um, and be able to get to some of that information and not to have it just be a name on a piece of paper. And then from the professional side, we wanted to, like I said, give them the ability to, to really differentiate themselves. So when somebody picks up the phone, they're calling because they really like your work, right? And they like you. So we talk about the house profile like um, a marketing clone, right? So, you know, if you, you know, Edic or, uh, you know, architect out there um, <clears throat> was able to clone themselves and spend, you know, 365 days a year, 24 seven, showing your work to prospective clients, introducing them to satisfied past clients, describing what it's like to work with you and how you're different from, you know, working with your colleague, you know, uh, across the street. You know, 
if we were able to enable you to clone yourself and do that, well, that's basically what we've done with the house profile, right? People can go on there. They can see every project you've done in depth and the notes that you've made on those projects. They can read a business description that, you know, doesn't just talk about awards and what you feel like saying about yourself, but actually reflects, okay, you know, if I'm sitting across the table from my prospective client, what am I saying to them? Or what questions do they usually have for me? How can you really put yourself in the client's shoes and talk about your business and talk about the things that are important to them to hear, right? What questions do they have? You know, how do you answer those questions so that what happens, and and we hear this from architects and other professionals all the time, is that when they get calls from people who found them on house, that person has seen every project in their portfolio, right? They've been, um, we kind of call it nice stocking, but they've, they've, they really, they have educated themselves uh, in depth. And by doing so, they have chosen you. They have, right, it's sort of your project to lose. But, you know, they have said, gosh, you know, I like what this person does. I read these reviews. I'm, com- I'm really comfortable with this person. And, you know, people get hired sight unseen or instead of having to go through the usual dog and pony show of showing their portfolio, it turns into a working meeting from day one. Um, and so that's kind of the really the power and the way I think that architects need to take control uh, of that situation is to find every opportunity to really build their personal brand and explain why working with them you know, is, is actually different from working with somebody else or working with a draftsman. Um, so that you get somebody who, who, you know, the, the difference in amount is not as important as being happy with the outcome, right? For most people on house, finding the lowest cost option when we ask them is at the bottom of the list. They want someone who, right, they're confident they're going to invest that money, they're going to be happy with the outcome, and that the process is not going to suck. It's going to be fun. And, and those are difficult things. And that's what most people want more than anything. So how do you, how do you communicate that? Uh, and, you know, we try to give them the tools to do it. How do you communicate that? Have you seen anyone doing that successfully? Or do you have any tips for our audience about how to communicate that? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one of the big things is to make sure that, you know, you're uploading professional photos of your project. So it doesn't matter if they're small or large or modest, right, or elaborate uh, in terms of the materials, but they do have to be well represented. Um, and we actually built a photographer network and we have photographers that, you know, professional photographers who for as little as $200 will photograph a, a project, um, eight daylight photos. So there's really no excuse to not represent your work uh, in its best light. That's that's one way to build your brand. Um, another is to really take the time to get client reviews. Um, and once you get those reviews, uh, the house platform enables you to respond to them right in line. So take the time to, you know, thank the client for the review and explain, you know, talk about maybe one aspect of working with that client or the project that you really enjoyed, because that's, again, another branding opportunity, right, that people out there checking you out are, are going to look at. I mean, as I said before, when you write your business description, don't write something that pleases you, you know, the architect. Write something that's going to answer the questions of the people, you know, reading your profile that you know, you know, if they were going to meet with you, they were going to ask you X, Y, and Z. Well, how can you address that? You know, how do you work with your clients? What is your approach? What's your philosophy? How often do you meet? Um, the more information that you can give them about, you know, are, or do you focus on customer service? Is their satisfaction the most important thing to you? You know, help them really... Uh, understand how you think and what it would be like to work with you. Don't just list your awards um, because that's usually less important to people than what it's going to be like to work with you. Absolutely. And the the second thing that I know a lot of architects are concerned about or would would be intrigued about with house is the ability to get, to get leads, you know, to get more projects as I think that's one of the things that appeals to a lot of architects. Could you tell me a little bit about how that works? Um, I would definitely get into that. I think the one thing I would like to talk about before I do that is the number one way that architects use house. Um, you know, before anyone ever got leads or jobs from house, when I started in 2011, I called 50 architects that were using house. And, you know, the one consistent message I got, uh, was that using idea books and idea books are essentially kind of virtual folders where you can save photos on house. Um, you can collaborate with your clients or your colleagues. So you can actually, like Google Docs, uh, add people to those idea books. They can edit, they can add photos, they can make notes. Um, but using idea books with their clients was truly disruptive and transformative for their businesses, um, both at the start and throughout the project. So um, 
architects would tell me that um, when they use idea books with a client, you know, the client is much more comfortable from the start, right? They're able to, to quickly show that architect directionally what they like and what they don't like, right? You know how difficult it is just to do it using words, right? And architects say, you know, my, even if they say their mo- style is modern, well, you know, maybe my modern is, you know, corners and white and theirs is warm woods and circles, you know, I, and it, it, there's a, there's a wide variety, right? Even within each word and, and how do you get into that? Um, architects tell me that, you know, they used to have to do and build their clients for, you know, hours of sort of preliminary drawings and directional work. And now they don't have to do that anymore. It saves them time. It saves the client money. Um, and even throughout the project, right, they're able to work remotely or asynchronously, right? They don't, people are busy, right? My architects are like, oh, my clients aren't getting older, they're getting younger. So, you know, I got working couples and how do I communicate with them when we can't meet in person uh, as often as I used to do that with my clients? Well, with idea books, right? They can make decisions and, and actually communicate back and forth and, and uh, get things done uh, virtually. So, um, or they take them to the job site and actually show contractors or subcontractors exactly how a detail should be executed. So really using those visuals to communicate um, throughout the project has been, you know, the most important and transformative tool for all the professionals in our, our community, right? Even for somebody, if they never got a lead or, or leads or business, um, house has been incredibly valuable for them just to be able to work with clients uh, more effectively and, and, and have a happier outcome. So just wanted to make sure folks were aware of that uh, as a tool and really how important it is, you know, to the professional community and, and, uh, and their businesses. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Liza, so much for taking the initiative on that, on that question and just bringing that to the forefront, you know, because a lot of times in those architects, we do focus on, man, I just need projects now and might be overlooking all the other things that house is useful for. Like yeah, actually, I, I can give you a quote. So, um, Rasmus and Sue Architects, they, they sent me a note. They said, the nice thing about house is the ease of use. It's easier for us to update our house profile than it is to update our website. Since our house profile always has pictures of our latest projects, we use it as a way to present our portfolio as well as our client recommendations. We also encourage our clients to make um, house profiles so we can communicate using idea books throughout the design process. Um, five years ago, we would have our first client meeting without with a binder and files that were difficult to filter through. With house, it's easy to see what someone's aesthetic is at a glance. So again, it's you know a lot of value there just in that communication process. Absolutely. And it must be really fun for you, Liza, just to be part of this thing that is just becoming a game changer in the way that people design and construct. I mean, that's pretty fun. Yeah, it's really fun. And, you know, as a marketer, I I want them to be successful, right? I, I want to say, you know, gosh, it doesn't have to be hard. You don't have to work that, you know, you don't have to work that hard at marketing yourself, but you do have to do a little self-reflection and, right, think about how you work with your clients and just, you know, take a few minutes to... Um, communicate that kind of best part about about you and how you work right everybody wants to be recognized as an individual not just an architect and um, I, I want them to feel like they have the ability to do that definitely well so you told us about the importance of um, really building out the profile by getting uh, getting reviews uh, getting professional photographs updated making sure that the the description is you know, fully filled out and making sure that um, architects and designers respond to the people who are leaving the reviews, right? Yep. I know I know that um, I've gotten solicited, so I know you guys have outgoing phone calls. You guys do telemarketing, which I think is very interesting. And um, part of the, the thing that you're, the opportunity that you're giving to architects is to have, um, I, I guess, is, is it called a pro- a pro so, oh, pro or? plus, pro plus. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about leads, leads in business, um, so I can give it some context because it's a really good question. So, um, house uh, professionals on house kind of can get business uh, and get exposure two ways. So one is organically, right? Like any other social platform, if you're building up your portfolio and your photos, right? They're appearing in our photo stream. Um, people have access to, to the pros in our, in our local directory. Um, but we use technology. And all that's free, right? And all that's free. We yeah. use algorithms, right? We use technology to float hopefully the most relevant content to the top, 
So if you go into the directory, you'll see the professionals that have invested the most uh, time into building out their profiles because that's a better user experience, right? We're not going to put the empty profile at the top. We're going to put in the person that, you know, is going to give the users the best experience. Um, and similarly on photos, right? When people are doing searches for photos on house, we can see, right, which photos are being added to idea books most often and which have been keyworded and have information on them so that if somebody is looking for that Hamptons kitchen, you know, which photos are turning out to be the best match, just like Google does uh, uh, in their search results. Um, so lots of professionals have been you know, contact and, and hired through organic exposure. We have, you know, great stories uh, locally and, and globally. Uh, and I think that's pretty amazing, the global exposure as well. Um, and a few years ago, you know, essentially after hearing about professionals getting work and, and saying, you know, I, this is great. How do I get more of this? Or, you know, I'm, I'm in New York and I'm getting lots of calls from New York, but I'd like to work, you know, I want to get jobs in Palm Beach as well. How do I make, you know, how, do, how does that happen for me? Um, and so ProPlus is a local advertising program that we developed basically to meet, uh, to meet those requests. So nothing changes about the organic activity um, or the organic exposure, uh, but professionals can buy advertising programs that will put their work in front of people in the specific local geographic areas that they're interested in. Um, so the important thing about that is you can't really game the system, right? If, if you don't have good quality photos, if you're not representing your business well or building out your profile, then all the advertising in the world isn't going to help you, right? If I'm sending someone to look at your profile or putting, you know, your latest kitchen remodel in front of them and your photos are grainy and look terrible or they click through and your profile is empty and you have no reviews, not going to result in, in much business. And so the, the nice thing about the program is that, um, you know, there's still – you can't have somebody who doesn't do good work, you know, all of a sudden jump ahead or uh, uh, right, compete really effectively with someone who um, is doing a good job. There's still kind of a basic uh, level of entry where you, you, know, right, you have to represent yourself well, even if you do more modest projects, right? You have to do that well. Um, but what it does is it guarantees exposure, right? The organic, there's nothing guaranteed. Your work is circulating out there with all the other photos on house. Um, and a lot of the times it's being added to idea books and, and people are seeing it and they're saving it, right? And you're getting a lot of feedback. Um, but if you want to get, if you want guaranteed exposure and people are browsing photos, we'll actually put, right? And they're browsing kitchens. We're going to put your kitchen remodeling photo, uh, into that photo stream and make sure that they see it and make sure it's easy for them to see that you're local, um, and provide a little bit more information about you. Um, that's what the Pro Plus program is able to do is, is able to kind of help you start that that brand building process and get you in front of exactly the people in the areas that you want to reach. So the pro plus, you mentioned that uh, if people are looking at photos, that it will, it will insert your photos into that photo stream that they're searching. Yes. Um, I've also seen that it will actually, if they, they have the ability to search for pros in a, in a geographical area mm -hmm. and it will also insert your profile up near the top. That's correct. Right. Yes. Yes. Because those are probably people who are searching for a pro. It's probably because they're looking to hire someone. Exactly. Yep. And what's, I think what's interesting though is, um, you know, what we really learned early on at House is that, um, and it, it is reflected in our most recent survey data where, you know, people are spending on average at least six months in researching um, before they start a kitchen remodel, for example, and 10% are spending as much as 24 months. So the process of, of doing that research and gathering your ideas, right? It used to be when I, before house, when I remodeled my kitchen, it was, you know, go through magazines, put pictures in folders, save up your money. And then when you were ready to go, that's when you started getting recommendations for who to hire. Well, how's it sort of turned that uh, model on its head because every photo is attached to the professional who did the work. So what you're able to do now by having your photos right served up to people locally in the photo stream is, well, that person may be six months away from being ready to hire you. But now what's happening is they're saving your work to their idea books and they're going back to that as a reference and saying, oh yeah, I really like Enoch's work. I'm going to contact him. Um, when I get to the point where I'm ready to move forward. And so what's happening is you're basically setting preference and brand preferences, right, and provider preferences 
in that early important part of the process when people are already gathering their ideas. And, and I've had lots of professionals say, oh, yeah, I, I got a call the other day from a woman who said she was following me for a year, right, saving up her money. She knew I was the person she wanted to work with. She loved my work, right? She'd been saving my photos and, and following everything that I did. The, the, you know, that, the professional had no idea until the call came, right, that he'd been nicely stalked for a year. Um, but that's exactly what's happening. And that's why the photo stream part of this uh, is so important um, because, again, we get people that are at all stages of the process, right, from ready to hire to, you know, six months to a year before they're ready to hire. But this is when they're starting to make those choices even before, well before they pick up the phone. And it's why building that really robust profile is important, right, because they're actually reading all that and that's forming some of their choices and you don't even know what's happening. So you have to push that information out there to make sure that you're, you're communicating what's important uh, from the very beginning. Do you guys have any metrics on on globalization or on the fact that people are now looking beyond their local areas? Is how's having any sort, of, any sort of impact in terms of a designer over here in California working with a client over in South Carolina? Yeah, we have lots of stories like that. Um, uh, um, architects and designers are the most common because they're willing to travel or work remotely. Obviously, it's a little bit harder for a, a contractor, um, but yep. we have seen some some home builders do it or try to work with local resources. But yeah, I mean, we've had architects. Bud Dietrich was hired um, for a project uh, in New Zealand. We've had you know a designer work remotely. Um, uh, on a project in Greece, um, we had a landscape architect hired uh, for a project in Dubai. So we're seeing um, more and more of this happen. And now that we've opened in these other countries, we're seeing it happen the opposite way um, uh, as well. Um, and it's really, it's really fascinating. But I think it, it speaks to people when they have a preference, right? They'll go to great lengths to get what they want and who they want to do the work. Um, so, you know, having that opportunity to, to put your work in front of them is, is so important. And what, what kind of stories are you seeing? I mean, you just mentioned a couple of them there. Do you have any others that you can share with us? Um, sure. Uh, let's see what would be, um, a good one. Um, you know, and it's really kind of all over the, uh, all over the country. So, um, Don Zuber in Michigan, Studio Z Architecture, um, you know, she gets a third of her projects through house. You know, she talks about that the, the contract signing is like a 50% close rate um, and that they're not, you know, they're not tire kickers. These are motivated, you know, high profile clients. Um, you know, she's got 24 projects displayed and, and the clients are, are looking at these projects before, before they pick up the phone. Um, let's see. Let's look at another good one. Um, I'm glad you give a little shout out to Dawn. I don't know if she's listening yeah. to this or not, but <laughs> she's great. Hey, Dawn. Yep. Yeah. And Dawn is using the ProPlus program. So a lot of these, you know, Jimmy Crisp is a great example of one of the top architects on house. He's based in New York um, and he was successful organically. Um, but, uh, what does he said? He says, you know, he probably gets six calls or emails a week from people that find him on house. Um, you know, he considers houses having an around the clock marketing team, right? Showing his work to people. Um, and, uh, one of the interesting things we talk about on the market research side is because you can see which of your photos people are adding to idea books, you can see which of your photos are actually most popular. Um, it helps you understand what to use in, you know, uh, your blogs or your newsletters, which is exactly what how he's using it, right? A, a lot of the time, you know, for a design professional, you get attached to a project, you know, you love the detail, or maybe you enjoyed working with that client, but maybe that's not the work that's going to bring in the most business for you. Um, and so how's kind of gives you insight into what's really resonating. And um, I think some of the things that surprise professionals are, it's often a detailed shot. So uh, one kind of tip for, for architects and other pros is not just to include the big, beautiful wide shots uh, of the homes that you do, but show people the little details and the clever details. Maybe it's clever storage under the stairs or a, an interesting bookshelf um, or a window seat. Some of these things are uh, surprise the professionals uh, about their projects, about how popular these details can be, um, but kind of gives them insight into what people are looking for and looking at. Mm. Interesting. Liza, I know that, um, oh, just a quick question. Is, is there any, um, I think on house you have, you have designers and architects grouped together. Is it possible to search those separately? 
Um, no, we have we have uh, interior designers broken out. So we have uh, building designers. Yeah, building okay. designers, building designers, and architects. Yep. Is there any verification that you do to make sure an architect is licensed? I know that Home Advisor and some of the other kind of more lead gen platforms, you have to prove that you have an active license. Yep. Um, so we have a place for license number. Uh, if you go to a building designer uh, uh, profile, it says building designer. It doesn't say architect um, on their actual profile. Uh, and again, the idea is to give the community as much information as possible so they can do their due diligence, right? We kind of treat the community as, as intelligent and we're going to show you, right, show them your work and everything that we can about you, but we really do expect that they're going to do their due diligence and make sure that you're um, licensed and really the person that they intend to hire. So you leave it on the consumer themselves to do the policing. You don't have any policing of making sure that um, even with contractors that licenses are up to date or anything like that? Um, we don't go through a verification process. Okay. We do leave it up to the community. But, you know, having to build such a rich profile does a pretty good job of filtering that out. Um, when you filter out people that, uh, you know, for the, the folks that are really trying to game the system or don't do quality work, it's very difficult for someone like that to get any exposure on house. It's too much work. Liz, I was, I was looking, I saw, I saw a car mechanic that had a profile on house. Well, you know, like any internet site, there's plenty of spam and is there? Okay. profiles on a daily basis. But okay, I just, I just got to chuckle. Pretty hard. Yeah, you probably have to work pretty hard to find it or search for it. We clean that stuff out on a regular basis. But uh, since yeah. it's free to create a profile, you, you get a lot of funny things in there, like any internet site. I got you. So you, know, you do again, have to, yep. We, the, because the best stuff rolls to the top, it's very unlikely that uh, consumers come in contact with something like that before we find it. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, you guys must do a pretty good job because they're, yeah, I, I really haven't seen any sort of spam profiles or anything like that. Well, it's funny because the community is fairly good at self-policing too. So, mm. you know, the professionals will report on, you know, it's very, very rare, but if somebody sees someone who, you know, they think is sketchy or is, you know, not representing themselves correctly, you know, they'll let us know. Or if they see something in the, you know, in the directory that's not appropriate, they'll let us know right away. And I think that's the nice piece mm. of having built a relationship with so many of the professionals in our community directly is they care about it, right? They feel ownership in the platform. They want it to be successful. Um, and so, you know, they help us you know, keep it clean. For our discussions area in particular, we go to great lengths to make sure that it stays positive. Um, I think it's one of the more unusual forums out there on the internet where, you know, we really, um, we really foster a sense of, you know, good community and helping each other and, uh, and teaching and educating. So you don't get people in there just kind of, you know, saying nasty things, you get them really in there working on projects. And it, it's part of what, you know, keeps people coming back. And, you know, if you get the occasional person that doesn't know how to play nice, the community takes care of them pretty well. So how does the community do that? Do they just get flagged or reported and then your, your team will remove a posting or? Yeah, you know, it really depends on what it is. If it's, you know, someone from China trying to sell something, then they'll flag it. Um, if it's somebody that uh, says something unkind, the community will actually, instead of us having to go in and tell them, hey, this isn't how our community operates, you know, people in the community will actually um, give them that feedback directly. And so it's really nice to see they care so much. Excellent. I, I think, was it last year that Howes announced a partnership, a strategic partnership with the AIA, American Institute of Architects? Yes. Yes, um, that's been great this year. We've had a, a number of, of, of key initiatives. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the great things is we started um, uh, offering profiles for associations uh, and schools. So I think the majority of AIA components, chapters now have profiles on house. So if you're a member of a local chapter, you can put that badge uh, on your own profile and, and you know, give more exposure to your chapter and hopefully bring in new members. Um, a couple of the great things that we did in the past year. So the CRAN, the Custom Residential Architects Network Symposium, um, had some really amazing speakers, uh, and we live streamed that uh, all over the world so that it would reach um, not just architects in other countries, but actually uh, other professions. And so it was really great to see people from around the world getting to experience the content there. Um, and then uh, most recently, uh, we announced the winners at a convention and, and had some great uh, content and um, 
uh, roundtables going on around it, but we ran a showcase and contest called the Future of Architecture. So I think there the AIA and House have some have some joint goals, right, and 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 are aligned on a couple things. One is right, making sure that the general community and and consumers appreciate good architecture, right, see the value in good architecture, right. We want people to hire architects and want to live uh, in a more beautiful space and um, understand that you know somebody who knows what they're doing can actually change the way that you live and change your life, um, and. Uh, that's you know that's one big piece and and the other is um you know to really help architects grow their businesses and understand how to be successful in this in this digital age right it's not an easy it's not an easy uh transformation for a lot of folks and so the future of architecture um is a program that we put together to help um give more exposure to um emerging architects and architecture students right one of the things that I heard spending time in the community was that this was a big challenge for folks that are uh, trying to enter the practice, right? It's very hard to get um, any exposure for your work. And so we built a showcase where um, emerging architects and students could upload their projects. And we promoted that showcase to the 30 million people in the house community. And then they could vote for their favorite projects. Um, and we had five winners uh, in five different categories from, you know, small spaces to uh, aging in place to um, uh, green building. And it was really, a uh, we had some just absolutely incredible entries. Uh, and I think it was a great way of, again, drawing more attention to uh, those future practitioners to you know what what architects can do um, and really showing the community overall kind of what does the future of architecture look like and um, getting them excited about the practice of, of architecture um, and then also kind of helping um, uh, helping those architects move their practices and their careers forward So that's uh, thanks, thanks, Liza, for that. And in in what ways is the AIA helping out House? Sure. So they're helping kind of facilitate a lot of relationships with these groups. So they're working with us to communicate to emerging professionals, to the student groups, um, helping us. Uh, you know, this this showcase and contest was something that we built together. Um, to kind of hit to achieve these to achieve these joint goals, um, and so we obviously have the incredible consumer community, right? That we can not just have five people win a contest and it doesn't have an impact on a large group, but be able to actually draw attention to a much larger group of of professionals. Um, so the AA is really trying to help, you know, facilitate that to bring in more participants and to help. Um, make sure that architects help us help architects be more aware of how as a tool that can help them grow their businesses and, and be more successful right there. They want members, they want people to have successful practices and they want to make sure that their members have access to the best tools and are knowledgeable about them. Awesome. Well, I encourage our listeners to go look at the uh, future of architecture uh, winners. You can just Google that and that'll come up here. And um, I'm happy to see. Well, I, I knew this, but Kevin Costello, who is one of our previous guests on the show, oh great, um, was the innovation winner. So that's good to see. Kevin's an awesome guy. We had him on here. Um, Hawaii, <laughs> <sighs> nice place. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yep. Um, Liza, is there anything else that we that you wanted to tell our listeners before we? I've tried to kind of cover everything. Hopefully ask the kind of questions that our audience would like to ask you personally. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell us? Um, maybe two things. You know, one, we're always coming out with new tools. Um, we offer a free website tool. So if there are architects out there that don't have a website or have an out-of-date website or just think their website is difficult or expensive to update, um, if you have a free house profile, you can easily use our site designer tool and, and create a, a mobile-friendly website. Um, your listeners may not be aware that Google recently um, made a change to its mobile search results, so it gives preference to mobile-friendly sites. Right? We've all we've all used sites where you're doing the crazy pinch and zoom, trying to find the navigation from your phone because the website's not very mobile-friendly. 
um, we build our templates to be mobile friendly and, and make the navigation easy. And so if their, if their current website isn't mobile friendly, they may not be showing up in mobile search results. And we know that half of house users are accessing house from a mobile device. So it's really kind of a must and something they should consider. Um, and the second is that we have a really nice team of people. If, if anyone out there just feels intimidated or needs some help, um, they can go to support.house.com and jump on the phone with one of our team members and we'd be happy to help them with really anything. So don't be intimidated. We're nice. We're real people and we're here to help. Awesome. Appreciate that, Liza. So uh, going back to the site designer, wanted to how would the architects, because that probably sounds pretty interesting to some of our listeners, is mm-hmm. that a standalone website that they can put on their own domain? How does that, what are the details there? That's correct. It's meant to, you know, replace a current site or, or be a website for someone who doesn't have one. Um, you do need to build a house profile. One of the nice things is the site um, at its most basic pulls in the content from your house profile. So now you only have to upload photos to one place or get re- reviews on a single platform and they will appear not just on house, but on your website. Um, once you create a house profile, there's a, a big button on your own view that says, you know, site designer. Uh, and if you click it, you kind of drop right into the tool. Um, or if you Google it, house site designer, you can find it. Uh, and you can customize the templates. You can add content. You can make it completely different and different looking from your house profile uh, and publish it. And if you have your own um, domain, your own URL that you've been using, you can easily transfer it so that um, it's pointing to your new site designer site. Uh, or if you don't have a website and you don't want to pay for a domain, um, House will provide one for you as well. Great. Thanks, Liza. And support.house.com is where anyone can go and, and reach out to your staff. And like you said, be helpful with practically anything. Yep. Yeah, support.house.com and then resources for professionals. If you go to house.com um, forward slash pro, P-R-O, uh, that's a great place to find access to kind of all these different tools and resources. Excellent. Well, thank you, Liza, for being with us on the Business of Architecture today. Thanks for having me, Enoch. It's always fun to talk to you. And that's a wrap for another show about the business of architecture. If you enjoy listening to podcasts, one of the best ways that I found to grow professionally and personally without spending a lot of time studying is by listening to audiobooks. I can't stress enough how much this has helped me. I probably listen to at least one audiobook each week, if not more. I listen to them when I'm at the gym, driving around town, or when I'm just out walking. I like to call books a decade in a day because in a few hours you can absorb the best lessons and information that an author has spent years accumulating. Don't learn things the slow way through experience in the school of hard knocks. Take a shortcut and learn from the world's best experts right out of books. Today you have the knowledge of the world at your fingertips. Your potential is practically limitless. Now I get my audiobooks downloaded straight from my phone from Audible, which is affiliated with Amazon. And the cool thing is that it remembers where I left off no matter which device I left off on. You can get a free audiobook with a 30-day trial to Audible and support this show by going to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash book. I can't recommend it enough. Try it out. It very well may change your life. Also, please go to iTunes and leave a review for the show. There are two reasons to do this. First, it encourages me to continue making free content for you to run a fulfilling and profitable practice. And secondly, it allows others to find this content inside of iTunes so that they can benefit as well. For free resources for running an architecture practice that is both fun, flexible, and profitable, visit businessofarchitecture.com and click the join button to unlock your account to Business of Architecture Insider. As a member, you'll have access to free tools and resources to help you get more clients, boost profitability, start a firm, and much more. Until next week, this has been The Business of Architecture. views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment except to help you conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5, Do It Anyway.